Hi. Hi. Welcome back to another episode of Wicked Mysterious. I'm your host, Danny. And I'm Katie. And this is episode number four, 15. 15, yeah. Wow. It just keeps getting higher. <laughs> every Plus week. one every week. It's really incredible every, how. Every other week. How math maths. Yeah. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? Um, COVID kicked my ass. I'm not going to lie. Mm, yeah, s- you did. Yeah. I was fine when it happened, but like the after effect is what sucks. Yeah. I'm just super tired. It lasts the after effects last too yeah. long. And I think I still sound sick, even though I'm not like sick. Yeah. It's weird. Sick. Also in current news, how do we feel about the UFOs? Feels exciting. Exciting and surreal. I just hope it's not our government fucking with us let's tell them about it like right now it's um what day is it right now that we're recording it's february 12th february 12th so that's it's going to be another like month before this comes out probably yeah so we're gonna the people will be hearing this in like you know past tense Mm -hmm. that's okay yep because currently right now and supposedly for the past few days we've had some ufos Shot down by our government, mm-hmm, sure. our wonderful government. <laughs> trying to kill them, trying to kill the aliens, and that's not a good idea. Well, we don't even know if they are aliens. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they are. Yeah. That's best case scenario on, yeah. at this point, which is kind of scary and sad. Like we, like we <laughs> said, the word I, unidentified, like they're using, is, is a very strong word. For mm-hmm. us to not be able to identify something, that's pretty significant. Right. So it's probably aliens, and they're probably pissed that we're shooting them down. They're, they're probably, probably like, what the fuck? We do this all the time. Why all of a sudden is Biden ordering us to get I shot know, down? Because it's fodder for World War III, mm. so they can be like, look what China's doing. Yeah, I like that theory a lot. Yeah, but it's, it's, not, it's not China. It's, right. the, it's the, the UFOs, the aliens yeah. coming to take us home. <laughs> <laughs> take us Please home. take me. If I see one in my backyard, I'm standing and like begging with my arms up in We're the sky. We're gonna hold hands, like we said, <laughs> yes. together. You're gonna call me over. I'm coming home, coming home. Oh man, best case scenario. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's interesting that a lot of them have been over Lake Michigan. I know. I was thinking that too because of our boy uh, Stephen Kubaki. Yes, Kubaki. Kubaki. I always um, think of the word kielbasa for some very <laughs> strange kielbasa. reason. Like he was Polish, I think. That name sounds Polish, but yeah, yeah, I don't know why. I always think of Stephen K- K- Kielbasa. Yeah, Kielbasa. Kubasa? Kubasa. That's yeah. really what I think. I think. <laughs> Kubaki, Kubaka. Kubasa. Um, right. Speaking of Stephen Kubaki, our TikTok is doing pretty well. Yeah, your TikTok. You are killing it on well, that, girl. You are killing it. Only one one uh, video killed it. The rest are meh. They'll get there. Maybe. Yeah, they will. Maybe. Because Somebody... a lot of people, when they watch one, they'll continue to watch older ones. Yeah, that's true. So, But I haven't been as consistent as I wanted to be because I like quickly ran out of topics. So yeah, yeah. I, though, ep- your episodes are harder for me to talk about because I, I didn't research them. So right. like, I don't know what like the back of my hand. I think but... you're doing a phenomenal job. Oh, thank you. Check out our TikTok people because yeah. she's doing amazing. Her face is so beautiful too. Oh, so it, it helps. She's so sweet. Somebody reported my face <laughs> as offensive. They, they reported you. They were jealous. <laughs> there was nothing offensive in that TikTok at all. They were no. just jealous. <laughs> Which um, is just great. I, I actually like like having somebody that hates us mm. because... Oh, there'll be plenty, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, there already yeah. is. Yeah. Our whole lives. See? Yeah. <laughs> and that's why we're here together. <laughs> when you sent it to me that they flagged it or whatever i was just like i hate people man this is what i mean and you're like but listen to it there's nothing offensive and i'm like that doesn't have to be people are just whack jobs i know i had somebody commenting um that i should repent and like my sins and stuff i was like what and then they just kept going with their like jesus spiel oh, so spiel yeah. spiel spiel yeah and i just deleted their comment because yeah, we don't have space for that in here yeah yeah 
I yeah. would easy block. I'm, I'm so quick to block. Yeah. We're also getting followers from the TikTok reels that I posted on Facebook. On Facebook. That's so that's cool. Yeah. So thank you to our new followers and hello and welcome. Yes. Hello. <laughs> we're, two, we're two crazy people who read stuff off Google. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So today I have something really special for you. <laughs> I'm excited. So this is an upart. Do you know what an upart is? Mm -hmm. It's an out of place artifact. Oh, so that's a really cool name for it. Yeah, it's like oops, an artifact. Yeah, oops, an artifact. Uh -huh. <laughs> they were creative with that name. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, this oop art is called the Upshur Bell. Okay, that's what we're going to be talking about today. So in 1944, in a home in West Virginia, a 10 year old boy named Newton Anderson was moving coal in his basement. His basement had a coal chute, and they would move the coal into the furnace for heat. The home was located in Buckhannon, West Virginia, which is part of Upshur County. The coal in this part of West Virginia is a bit bituminous coal, also known as black coal. It contains a substance called bitumen or asphalt, which is a tar-like substance. This coal occurs typically between 200 and 300 feet below the Earth's surface. It's formed under heat and pressure and takes 200 to 300 million years to form. Oh, shit. Newton was playing in his basement one day, smashing chunks of coal with a mallet. Oh, Newton. <laughs> so much fun in 1944. Right? What we did before screens, just smash coal for fun. Mm -hmm. When it cracked open, he discovered a hand-sized bronze bell inside. The figurine on the handle is a person-looking thing, kneeling on one knee, with its hands in front of it as, as if in prayer. Huh. It appears to have wings and some sort of cape, and it's made of brass. It was a mixture of copper and zinc, along with tin, arsenic, iodine, and selenium. Interesting. The bell is only seven inches tall. And the clapper inside is made of iron, and one website said it still rings. Another website said that they lost the clapper, mm. so I don't know. Maybe it used to ring until they lost the clapper. I don't know. Damn clappers. Yeah. <laughs> There's a hook that holds a small chain attached to the clapper, and that hook is not centered properly. Mm. Many people think this indicates that the bell may have been repaired or adjusted after the initial assembly. At 300 million years old, mm. supposedly, so crazy, yeah. this bell depicts a bird-like creature, mm. yeah. and this was 100 million years before the evolution of birds with feathers. The only things at this time... I love how you said birds with feathers, because, like, is there <laughs> any, any birds, without, birds without feathers? Maybe. I don't know, maybe. because it talked about the Jurassic period, and we yeah. know that, like... And we know the woolly mammoth had hair, and elephants don't now, right? Right, so or, like... It's possible that birds did not have feathers once yeah. upon a time. Yeah, maybe. Or the Jurassic period being dinosaur. Are like, there any birds without feathers now? Actually, there were dinosaurs with feathers. Yeah, so this they talked about the Jurassic period, so... Mm -hmm. Interesting. Who knows? Yeah, that's so that's wicked weird. <sighs> wicked mysterious. Wicked. The only things at this time with wings were giant insects. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad that I wasn't in this period of right. life. Yeah, they were Fuck really that. big. Yeah. They had like giant ass dragonflies. See, and stuff. I can't I don't I think that's aliens. What? Huge ass insecticide people. Insecticide. Like, <laughs> Like, no, that can't be real. Like, that has, to be, people. that has to be from another planet. That's crazy. I yeah, can't. I don't, they must, I, they must have fossils of the giant. I didn't go giant down bugs. the rabbit hole of this the is, giant bugs, but it was another like. another topic. Yeah. Giant bugs. Yes. However, it's written with some certainty that this figure on the handle of the bell is Garuda, who was a Hindu demi demigod. Okay. He is known as the king of the birds and is depicted as a giant bird or a man with wings. Okay. He is the mount of the god Hindu Vishnu. So Vishnu rides around on him, basically. Hmm. Garuda is known for power and protection and his ability to fly quickly anywhere. Garuda has eagle wings and a sharp beak. But Hinduism is only 4,000 years old. And again, this bell is dated to 300 million years ago. Wow. Bells like this one are often used during the during religious ceremonies. 
Are you looking at this bell? I just can't stop looking at the bell. I'm like, it's just wicked bizarre. And it definitely has like a beak. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. Like a bird. It's weird. But why are some like gold and some look silver? Because the... Is um, it just the photos? That yeah. People? If you look up Upshur Bell, because yeah. it's also called the Garuda Bell, but there's a lot of different Garuda Bells because Garuda is just the demigod. So he was put on top of all different kinds of bells. But if you look up the Upshur Bell, it's like this one specific one. Okay. And I think they cleaned it up. It's not gold. It is bronze, but it looks gold in some of the pictures. Oh, okay. The Institute for Creation Research also indicates on their website that the figure atop the bell resembles Pazuzu, an ancient Mesopotamian demon known as the King of the Winds or a demon of the Southwest Wind. Hmm. Apparently, he was a bad demon, but he also didn't like other demons. There's good demons? <laughs> yeah, no, he, he, no like, but he was... <laughs> He wasn't good, but people liked him because he didn't like other demons. So people called on him to protect their homes from other demons. Hmm. Okay. I don't know. It's like having a bad guy protect you, I guess. I guess. Like, <laughs> they just want a bad person to yeah. protect them. And yeah, they trust the, that bad person. Yeah. Okay. I also read that he was the protector of pregnant women. That's interesting. So it's believed that this bell was made by a process called lost wax casting. Even though the oldest lost wax artifact had ever found was only 6,000 years old. So just to explain what the lost wax process entails, mm -hmm. they create a mold out of clay, mm -hmm. and then they pour wax into the mold, mm -hmm. and then they remove the wax replica from, from the mold once the wax is cooled. Mm -hmm. The wax replica is then perfected to remove any seam lines, and then detail is added to the wax. Yep. Wax channels are attached to create pathways for the bronze when it's poured in. Mm -hmm. They create a ceramic shell around the wax by dipping it into a slurry and then adding sand to it. Okay. Then they take the shells and they're de-waxed. Okay. So all you're left with is a ceramic shell. Bronze is melted at 1,700 degrees and poured into the ceramic shell. When it's cool, they use hammers to break the ceramic off the bronze statue, and any imperfections in the bronze are sandblasted. So it's like it's a a pretty, in depth it's pretty in-depth. Yeah. And again, the oldest process that we, the oldest artifact that we have that used this process is 6,000 years old. Mm. And they think this bell is 300 million years old. That's mind-blowing. So the Institute for Creation Research has concluded that the bell is antediluvian, which means that it dates back to pre-flood times on a biblical timeline. The University of Oklahoma was the one that did this testing, supposedly, but the only way that they could date it was by the coal that it was found in, which dates back to 300 million years. However, they didn't date the coal. They're just dating it based on this guy's story. So there's no real scientific evidence e either way. Mm -hmm. um, but they also noted that the metals used to create the bell are a strange mixture mixture and not ones used by other civilizations. And this boy was, like, in his home. Yep, he was he 10. was in his basement. Uh -huh. And so, like, his basement was, this is just coal that they had to heat their furnace, mm -hmm. right? So this coal wasn't found in his basement. It was found somewhere else. It was mined. It was mined. Near his house. And brought to their home for fuel. Yes. For heat. Yep. Um, Sent down the coal chute. So really, we don't know exactly where it came from, right? Like, um, we'll get into that because okay. they do na narrow it down oh, to where cool. it came from. Okay, but and this is West Virginia. Yeah. Okay. Um, in 1963, the University of Delaware at Wilmington's geology department studied the bell and determined that it was handmade. Wow, that's crazy. This makes the Garuda Bell an upart or out of place artifact. Uparts typically predate mankind and support the idea that there was intelligent civilizations mm -hmm. millions of years before mankind. Mm -hmm. Newton Anderson kept the bell in his possession until 2007 when he donated it to Genesis Park. Wow. So Genesis Park is some kind of institution located in New Hampshire that exists to prove humans and dinosaurs lived together. <laughs> wow. 
Oh, I love that. <laughs> At the time of this donation, Newton Anderson took and passed a polygraph regarding his recollection of the Bell's discovery. That's cool. I know polygraphs we already talked about, you know, but that's cool that he passed. Like, that's still an extra little... Yeah, but I have some problem. I have a lot of problems with this whole thing. <laughs> oh. So it had been a really long time since he found the bell. Mm-hmm. So maybe his memory wasn't accurate, but he thought it was. Therefore, he could pass a polygraph because he wasn't actually lying. Yeah, it was It was like 20 years later almost. 19. No, it was like it... 60 years. Oh, 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 2007 you're saying. Yeah. I don't know why. He I found it in 1944. Right, he found it in 1944. Okay. Yeah. Um, so 2007, yeah, that was quite a big stretch of time. Yeah. And then the other thing that I don't like about this whole thing... But how do you forget something like that? I mean, if well, you really found something that you learned could be 300 million years old, I right. feel like you would, that's a very strong memory. Right. You know. This bell is used by creationists to prove the creation theory true. Creationism is defined as the religious belief that nature and aspects such as the universe, earth, life, and and humans originated with supernatural acts of divine creation. Mm -hmm. So the place that now owns this bell, Genesis Park, their website says, the purpose of Genesis Park is to showcase the evidence that dinosaurs and man were created together and have coexisted throughout history. One of the main bodies that researched and quotes this bell is ICR, the Institute of Creation Research. This is their mission statement on their website. Worship. Glorify Jesus Christ by emphasizing in all ICR resources the credit he is due as creator. Oppose the deification of nature by exposing Darwinian selectionism as an idolatrous worldview. Edification, help pastors lead, feed, and defend their flocks by providing scientific responses to secular attacks on the authority and authenticity of God's word. Mm. Change Christian's view of biology by constructing an organism-focused theory of biological design that highlights Jesus' work as creator. This is why you have a problem with this. This is why I have a problem with this. So <laughs> when did Jesus create the world? I, mean, I thought Jesus died. It wasn't no 300 million years ago, that's for sure. But it, was, it was like, what, before Christ, after Christ, so you figure... Yeah, but people believe that Jesus created the world. There are people that believe God, I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought too, which, world. okay. I, yeah, but that's what this says. This is their mission statement. That's... Yeah. To change people's minds with this evidence that they're using for their own agenda, which is mm. fucked up. Yeah, I wish the bell wasn't there. Yeah, I feel like it let's could go be so steal much it. Better. Yeah, <laughs> so much better. Anyway, right, that's there's a whack mission statement. Here's the third one: evangelism. Defend the gospel by showing how natural processes cannot explain the miracles in the Bible, which is like you're under the assumption that the Bible is true. That is a huge, huge assumption. That's a and huge that, assumption, and absolutely. that you're trying to prove it. On top of that. Counter objections to the gospel by equipping believers with scripture affirming science. So what I'm getting from this is like they do believe that Jesus made the world, but they're still trying to make people realize that Jesus also created dinosaurs. And yes, because I think some people don't think dinosaurs even like like are real right because right. of jesus creating i mean jesus is god creating the world not to get too religious right well, now this says jesus so i'm confused I know, me too. because i those are two different people they're two different well, things god's a, kind god of? is a, a, an unknown being an almighty god which could be anything that you want to be god right that's how i look at it but yeah like jesus is the is the is Mary's baby right? So how did virgin Jesus Mary. create the world if the Virgin Mary gave birth? Whatever. Yeah, okay. I don't get it. I don't. I get don't it. either. That's but really like I don't know if that's a typo, you guys. I, Genesis yeah, Park. ICR maybe uh, Genesis Park is different. This is ICR. But oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh my. Oh, see, I no, didn't it's know okay. what ICR was when you said ICR. Yeah, ICR it... is the Institute of Creation oh. Research. Genesis Park is similar. I don't know what they are because they did. Like say what they are, okay. but they're just some kind of website, 
And then they they it says on their website that they started off just as a website, but now I they must have a physical location because they're collecting artifacts to use okay. against people I was just because, who don't believe in Genesis Park is what, who has the bell who has the bell, but ICR is it's who who, does the research, who researched searches. it first. I yeah, see. so ICR's mission statement says right here. Counter objections to the gospel by equipping believers with scripture affirming science. Mm. So they're only looking at science that affirms what they already believe, mm. which is not science. Right. That's not True. how this works. That's not how science works. So I wrote, <laughs> <laughs> so we're not here to say what beliefs are right or wrong, mm. but having a theory and trying. <laughs> what happened? There's a fucking bug looking at me. Where? Oh, it's just a stink bug. I don't care. It's a <laughs> Hold, please. Freak. Are you all right? <laughs> no, it was looking right at me. I feel traumatized. I'm sorry. It has too many legs. It's on now. Oh my god. <laughs> you see how I couldn't exist in a giant bug world? It could not happen. I picked him up with my bare ass hands. Oh my god, you're my hero. You're my <laughs> okay. hero. Sorry okay. about that. That's all right. Sorry, sorry about that. We're back. We're back. Maybe I'll leave that in. Yeah, dude. <laughs> the sound of me getting up and running is, is probably... Oh, like, what happened? I looked down and that thing was staring right at me. Thank God it didn't jump because if it jumped, I, I would have fell to the floor. I don't think they jump. You oh. just can't step on them because they smell stinky. Yeah. They need to go the fuck away. They've never been around until this year. Now they're everywhere. No? Do you have them in your house? No. Luckily, but everybody I know have yeah. them in their yeah. house. Yeah. They're not bad. They can't hurt anything. Yeah, they just stink and they're ugly. Yeah. They're so ugly. Yeah, you don't step on them because they're stinky. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. So we're not here to say what beliefs are right or wrong, but having a theory and trying to prove it correct is not science. Right. right. Um, so just like police work, like if you watch a lot of true crime, they always say you let the evidence tell a story. You don't build a narrative and only look at evidence that supports your narrative, right. which Although, is what they're doing which here. There are a lot of corrupt yes. police that would do that. In, like, certain situations. Right. Not saying that all police are corrupt. I, I love you all police, you know? But I'm just saying that some policemen do do that. Yes. When they want to fit, fit a narrative for just to make solve the case. Mm -hmm. As we know, there's a lot of people that go to jail that are innocent. Well, this is the same type of thing. You yeah. can't pick and choose evidence to support a religious theory. No, if you you're can't. coming from a scientific standpoint. However, in their defense, they did go to the University of Oklahoma and not a paid specialist who shares the same creationist agenda. But then again, the university doesn't have any hard evidence to prove the real age of the bell since they could only go by the story that it fell out of a hunk of coal. But then I read on another website that it was actually a member of the ICR himself who studied the bell just using University of Oklahoma's lab and resources. So they're... You, they're Using this this um, scientific evidence that doesn't exist to prove that it's so all of the information on the bell was done by ICR. Like all the research on this bell was done by um, ICR. No, there was one prior other prior to ICR. There was other. In, in, no, know. ICR did. Um, they were the organization that like drove the investigation, mm -hmm. but there was another um, university that researched it. Okay. But all they could tell was that it was handmade. Okay. They can't say they can't Still a date very, it. Very um, important. Yes. Detail yes. for sure. And then I started wondering why Newton Anderson gave the bell to Genesis Park because they're a religious organization. Mm. And if it is true, how does a 300 million year old bell prove or disprove creationism? It only proves that modern science is incorrect and that there were no civilizations that long ago, but it doesn't prove creationism to be either right or wrong. No, definitely not right or wrong, but it could prove, you know, that there's were civilizations prior to what we think. Right, which only just means that our current science is wrong. It doesn't have anything to do with religion or no, religious it definitely beliefs. doesn't have anything to do with religion. But that's what they're trying to do, mm. and that's annoying. That's, yeah, that is annoying. Let's um, just say there was humans making bells way before we knew. Yeah, and then um, I found this good quote from MetallicMan.com, mm. um, and he did like a Q&A section. It says, if this bell was the product of an intelligent non-human race 300 million years ago, where are they now? 
And the answer is the human species has only been around for 25,000 years. And of that, only 6,000 years has been part of our recorded history. Proto-humans date back as far as 300,000 years ago. Thus, we could argue that entire civilizations can come and go, replete with their own proto-evolutionary forms at least three times every million years. If this is indeed the case, then we could theoretically have 300 times 3, which is 900 separate, intelligent, non-human civilizations develop independently on the Earth long before we as humans ever gained sentience. That's a mindfuck. It's kind of cool. It is. And interesting. Wicked. I um I I also want to know like how did they date this really like they didn't they they, they can't they can't so the to call only three hundred million years old the only way that they could date it is if they had that coal and and dated it then so if the if the story that it really was encased in coal and yeah. it fell out mm-hmm. it leans toward that it is that old because according to most science the only way that it could have gotten in there is when the coal was soft and it takes 300 million years to harden wow okay but well there is more on that point yeah because i was wondering if like the materials because you mentioned you know selenium and Mm -hmm. and different uh metals Mm -hmm. um i didn't know if that's how they were dating it like they were trying to no but they did say that the mixture itself was weird and not one that not 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 typical combination of exactly yeah yeah. exactly Um, so if it's possible that this is 300 million years old and was made by a civilization that long ago. What about the Garuda on top? Because Mm -hmm. Hinduism is only 6,000 years old. Mm -hmm. So is this not Garuda? Yeah. Is it some kind of angel? I'm leaning towards not Garuda. Is it another world, other worldly bird? (laughs) Hashtag not Garuda. (laughs) I I do think it definitely is not related to, um, if it's, if it's really, if Garuda is 6,000 years mm-hmm. old mm-hmm. then that's not right then it can't anywhere be very close yeah right. it, if it's not a bird it's an alien okay sorry. every episode i have to say it's something's an alien so guys i'm gonna like literally find something in every episode <laughs> is it not a bird but some kind of triangular face and not a beak mm. could it be a praying mantis <gasps> Yes. It has the same shape face. It has wings and praying hands like a praying mantis. Wow. Cool, huh? Because they're aliens. I have chills. They're alien as fuck. Well, have you seen um, one in real life? Um, ha, One of my biggest... You just saw how I reacted about a stink bug. Yes. Okay. Um, they, they are, are scary. They are up there on my biggest fears. Of course, spiders are number one. But, really? But yes. But number two is definitely praying mantis. So bad so that as a kid, there was one on my door and I waited outside for hours and hours and hours They're to my mom. Omen. I don't care. They fly at you. <laughs> and they have those freaking hands, those, these hands. Yes. And they turn their heads and stare. And they are aliens. Yes, They're absolutely. 100% aliens. Yeah. I like them. They're an outer earthly thing. I understand okay. why they're scary, though, because they are definitely freaky looking. And yeah. they like have they, like that knowing they face. Know, they, I was just going to say, they, they know way more yeah. than we think. Yeah. And, and and they are plotting their dive at you. I swear, when they look at you from a distance, I'm like, oh. Imagine if the UFOs came right now and you and I ran out into the backyard and it was praying mantises. mantises. <laughs> oh, my God. They are nuts. They are not normal. They definitely came from another planet. They came, they came either flying or <laughs> on a UFO. They really do look like alien faces. Yeah, straight up aliens. They, like... Yeah, I remember. Like I was like, if Wikipedia says it, then somebody it's probably just an updated alien. it. Yeah, of course. Ooh, praying mantis alien abducts young girl. <sighs> anyway, we're gonna have to write that down for an episode. Yeah. Did you type in praying mantis alien? A man in England claims he encountered a telepathic praying mantis. Well, if there's lizard people, there definitely could be praying mantis people. All right. So where was we? where was we? Okay. Praying mantises, we were basically saying that, um, you know, that, that the statue could be a praying mantis. So also, this is not the only time that someone has found something in coal. In a letter written and notarized in 1948, Frank J. Kennard said, 
While I was working in the municipal electric plant in Thomas, Oklahoma in 1912, I came upon a solid chunk of coal which was too large to use. I broke it with a sledgehammer. This iron pot fell out from the center, leaving the impression or mold of the pot in a piece of the coal. Jim Stull, an employee of the company, also witnessed the breaking of the coal and saw the pot fall out. I traced the source of the coal and found that it came from Wilburton, Oklahoma mines. Mark Isaac of the Talk Origins Archive says, The cup appears to be cast iron, and cast iron technology began in the 18th century. It is designed much like pots used to hold molten metals and may have been used by a tinsmith, tinker, or person casting bullets. Okay. The cup was likely dropped by a worker either inside a coal mine or in a mine surface workings. So, 18th century, you said? Yeah. That, so, so, 1700s. So, what does that tell us about the theory about the coal well, hardening? He, he's going to, he's talking about it right oh, now. Okay. Go ahead and um, talk about it, man. Mineralization is common in the coal and surrounding debris of coal mines because rainwater reacts with the newly exposed minerals and produces highly mineralized solutions. Coal, sediments, and rocks are commonly cemented together in just a few years. It could easily appear that a pot cemented in such a concretion would appear superficially as if it were encased in the original coal. Or small pieces of coal, including powder, could have been recompressed around the cup by weight. Thus, a person who broke open such a nodule might mistakenly conclude that it was part of the host formation rather than a secondary product of the mining environment. This phenomena has been documented with objects as modern as soda bottles and World War II artifacts, and thus cannot be used as anti-evolutionary evidence. One might object that we do not know that this was the case in regards to the iron pot in question. True, but most importantly, we don't know that it wasn't. In short, even if the workers were telling the truth as far as they knew, we have no reliable evidence that the pot was actually part of the original coal formation. Hmm. So we have evidence that the bell was part of the original coal formation? No. So so in, in theory, this whole mineralization thing could have also happened with the bell. Yep, and it can okay. happen in just a couple years. Okay. The ICR actually tracked down a realtor and using property records, they think they found the original mine where the coal and case bell came from. This mine had coal at a shallow depth of 100 feet leading to the possibility, if not likelihood, that this bell was created and dropped at this location much more recently than 300 million years. Okay. I kind of feel that as well. Yeah. Just because like... Yeah. 300 million is just a really big stretch. Yeah. Come on. And I believe that this Newton guy did find it in Mm -hmm. the basement and it probably was encased in coal, but... Yeah. Because, I mean, he was 10. It's not like... You know, it's not like he had any sort of motive to become famous over this. Like, you know, at its as ten, you're not thinking of that shit. You're not thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make up a big story and especially become not in 1944. No, definitely not. I mean, that was like newspaper. You had to wait for the newspaper to come out to learn about it. Right. Um, so yeah, that's um, definitely, probably like more likely. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Um, yeah, it was probably just dropped and then mm-hmm. encased in coal in a couple of years. Yeah, and then also like that theory that I had read about like right when we started that, you know, maybe coal miners used bells for communication. They could have, you yeah. know, like to, uh, they didn't have a cell phone to be like, we're done for the day, guys, you know, like know. maybe there was one guy like the you know, the head guy and he rang the bell at the end of the shift or something. And I'm not saying that's like why it's there, but it would make sense if it was only, you know, if it wasn't that old. Anybody could have dropped it at any time. Mm -hmm. So it might be like hundreds of years old, but, or even thousands of years old. That's totally plausible. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably likely. Yeah. That that's what happened. Yeah. I'm not feeling the 300 million no time frame. And again, like they're really forcing that whole like mm. this is pre-flood. Like your timeline doesn't really make any sense to no, begin with. It doesn't. So that's all I got for you this week. That's a cool one. I liked it. 
Great job. Thanks. <laughs> That's good. And we also had our little local news edition with the UFOs, which oh, is yeah, interesting. Yeah. Current current event news. Yeah, like we don't know if this is legit or not, but like, man, I really don't want to shoot down UFOs. Just Mm-mm. nobody with any right mind would think that's a good idea. Leave them alone. Like, unless they're literally beaming at us and trying to kill us with radiation, leave them alone. It's because they want to start a world war. And they're like, look at what this other yeah. country is doing. We don't know who it is. Is it Russia? Is it China? Let's start a world war. That's what they're doing. That's what they're going to do. Mm-hmm. They're going to fake an alien invasion. Mark my words. I want to see these ships. I want to, when you were like, what'd you call them? Alien ships and alien like, ships. UFOs? Yeah. <laughs> Same thing, right? So All that's right. it for this week. Thank you for listening. Thanks for listening. And uh, we will have another topic soon. 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 It'll be episode 16. Yay. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Stay, Stay mysterious. mysterious.